Hi, my name is Darswell Rogers, and I am an Xscale Business Agility Coach. Welcome to this introductory video on Leadership as a Service. It is a practice pattern relating to the A in Xscale. The A relates to the need for autonomous teams to be aligned around common objectives. So why did we develop this course? The answer is that people in organizations are experiencing VOCA, which is volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Organizations are operating in rapidly changing environments. Traditional organizations, however, are bureaucratic, meaning they are built to maintain status quo conditions. They actually oppose and squash the introduction of new information that is counter to the prevailing approach or narrative. The message that many organizations send to their employees is, we just want you to perform your function. You don't need to know or understand what is happening across the organization. Today, this is impractical given all the unknowns in the environment such as the exponential shifts in the use of technology and having five generations in the workforce with radically different views on their approach to work. With all the unknowns, we need to encourage learning and sharing. This is not about eliminating hierarchy, but devolving the responsibility for outcomes across the organization. Through Leadership as a Service, we create learning organizations, where the responsibility for specific outcomes is shared. This is to the benefit of everyone. Also with leadership as a service, we are specifically making a differentiation between leadership and management. When a team has clarity as to their objective, the need for managing is greatly diminished. However, the need for effective leadership remains and, and in fact may be more critical. Leadership's focus should be to serve the needs of the team in the successful completion of the assignment. While there have been decades of case study examples demonstrating the benefits of empowering teams, decentralizing decision making, and leading versus managing teams, the foundational culture within the majority of organizations, large and small, is for decision making to be concentrated with a small group at the top. In this short video, we will explore three examples of autonomous leadership. The first example goes back to the oldest known participatory government in history. That dates back to the year 1142 in North America. It is the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, more popularly known as the Iroquois Indians. The Confederacy represents six Native American nations that during the colonial period occupied much of the territory that now represents upstate New York into Pennsylvania. During this period, they were active traders with the Europeans who immigrated to New England, Pennsylvania, and Canada. The word Haudenosaunee means people of the longhouse. The longhouse is the foundation of their form of governance. Imagine a long building with the capacity to house about 50 people. A grouping of longhouses represents a village. A grouping of villages represents a tribe. A grouping of tribes represents a nation, and the nations represented the Confederacy. The members of each longhouse developed the rules of governance for the longhouse. Leaders of the longhouses meet to establish the governance for the village. However, the agreements of the village cannot override the agreements made by each longhouse. Similarly, the agreements of the tribe cannot override the agreements of each village. The agreements of the nation cannot override the agreements of the tribe. And finally, the agreements of the Confederacy cannot override the agreements of the nations. This approach to governance 
required dynamic participatory interaction amongst the leaders throughout the Confederacy, resulting in consensus. The consensus would be memorialized into treaties that governed operations at each level. While the Native American population is significantly smaller today, they continue to use this basic form of decentralized governance. The Iroquois' approach to decentralized decision-making was studied by the colonists. Benjamin Franklin wrote that the, about the Iroquois that there is no force, there are no prisons, no officers to compel in obedience or inflict punishment. In 1988, the United States Senate paid tribute to the Iroquois with a resolution that said, the confederation of the original 13 colonies into one republic was influenced by the political system developed by the Iroquois Confederacy, as were many of the democratic principles which were incorporated into the Constitution itself. For our second example of leadership, we move to the 21st century and the War on Terror. Here is the situation. The U.S. and its allies are losing the war against the decentralized terror network, or Al-Qaeda, that can move quickly, strike ruthlessly, and virtually vanish into the local population. Four-star General Stanley McChrystal was appointed head of the Joint Special Operations Command, or JSOC, to lead the war on terror. Following retirement, McChrystal wrote a book, Team of Teams, where he describes how he evolved the organization to respond to the demands present on the battlefield. This is what JSOC looked like when McChrystal took over. It was a traditional hierarchy with a need-to-know mindset as it related to the sharing of information. Its ultimate solution, driven by the need to win, was to create a decentralized organization in terms of decision-making. He also shifted to actively and dynamically sharing information across all areas of the national security apparatus, meaning all areas of the military, the CIA, FBI, Homeland Security, and State Department. While decision-making and information was decentralized, Crystal was still ultimately responsible for outcomes. He created a shared consciousness with a clarity of objectives and trust. This ultimately suppressed the terror network. Finally, I want to discuss Apple under Steve Jobs. Apple went through a period of unprecedented innovation and growth. Jobs once said, management is about persuading people to do things that they do not want to do, while leadership is about inspiring people to do things they never thought they could. He developed an organization that he describes as having no committees. The organization had directly responsible individuals, or DRIs, focused on the delivery of specific solutions that met the needs of the customer. They were active and dynamic interactions, and most importantly, trust among the teams that they would deliver. This approach to leadership, of empowering his people, explains how in a short decade they went from simply a computer company to the most valuable company in the world. Here are the introduction dates. iTunes, January 2001. iPod, October 2001. iPhone, June 2007. The App Store, July 2008 iPad 2010. As you proceed with this program on leadership as a service, you will realize and discover many approaches to leveraging these concepts within your organization. Enjoy the remainder of the program.